Great. So two main points. Separation of gluten and gluten containing items and cleaning. Those are the two key points. Let's look at separation first. Okay. So let's say, for example, that a family's cooking regular pasta and gluten-free pasta. This has probably happened in your house? No, not really. We keep it um, all gluten-free because our kitchen is really tiny. But when I go to my mom's house, she's a really nice big kitchen. Okay. Um, I really need to figure out how to do this. There's a lot of cousins that come, that come over and they have a really good time, but it's really, it's very stressful for me. And, had to kind of figure out how to do this. So for now, they're doing gluten-free too when we come that to their is house. So nice. But I'd like to go more often. And I'd like, like to, yeah. like to and figure out should. how to do this. You yeah. should. Okay. Yeah. So absolutely, if that happens that you're cooking a regular pasta and a gluten-free pasta, you've got them in two pots. Okay. And you've got two different utensils. One for the gluten-free. One for the gluten. One for the gluten-free. You notice that these are not wood. Okay. Wood is really porous and it holds on to gluten, so you would never want to share wooden utensils. That goes for cutting boards too. Okay. So, so utensils should be metal or plastic that doesn't have any deep ridges in it, mm -hmm. glass, something like that. And you'll also see that we've got two colanders here. Colanders can really hold on to gluten. It's very gummy mm -hmm. and it will collect here. You could spend hours cleaning a colander and maybe never really get it clean, even if it goes in the dishwasher. So we have separate colanders for straining. Okay. And this way you can, you can safely prepare two different meals. You can share pots and pans, okay. forks, spoons, knives, cups, bowls, you can share those if they're cleaned really well. Mm -hmm. So cleaning will remove gluten, but for these types of things where it's gummy and there's little holes or wood, you would want to keep them separate. The dishwasher is, is your best bet when you're when you're able to. Everything goes in the dishwasher. This is an example of separation. Here's here's another example. Let's say you have two, you know, gluten and gluten-free eaters in your home. If you have this amount of space, you would put your gluten-free products on the top shelf. Okay. And the gluten-containing ones on the bottom. That's one way to keep it separate. If you're lucky enough to have more space, you could actually have an entire cabinet that's gluten-free and another cabinet that's gluten-containing. Do you use toasters? I do. Right okay. now, I only have one toaster, which is gluten-free. But again, going to my mom's, people want to eat their own breads yep. and stuff. So, at your mom's, so in your own house, you have a gluten-free toaster. If you had other gluten eaters in your family, you would have two separate toasters. You do not want to share a toaster mm -hmm. with anyone because the, the contamination is pretty intense. Toaster ovens, you, you can share if you put down aluminum foil on top of it and carefully keep that really? bread on top of it in, in a pinch. It's not okay. ideal, but okay. when I travel, I'll put aluminum foil down on the tray and flip my bread on top of that. So that's okay. one way that you can travel. Okay. You can also buy toaster bags that you can travel with. In this case, we've got a cutting board over here and we have another cutting board over okay. there. This is actually a gluten-free zone and a gluten-containing zone. Very nice way of eliminating or minimizing cross-contamination. Here's another thing you can do. You can drop down every once in a while and just take a look at your countertop for crumb control. And then you can have someone else clean it if you happen to be the gluten-free one. <laughs> The refrigerator is another place where you can take care against cross-contamination. So, for example, in a family where everyone's using the butter, you can put a sticker on the gluten-free butter, oh. and then everyone else uses the other butter. Mm -hmm. The same thing for condiments. If you're sharing condiments, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, if you use the squeeze bottles, then you don't have the cross-contamination of what we call double dipping. Oh, right? that's a great idea. Love Super it. easy. Mm -hmm. And that way, um, a knife going into peanut butter and being spread on regular bread will not be going back into that jar, and you can eat the, from the same containers. In the refrigerator also, you can do the shelf idea mm -hmm. with the gluten-containing bread items lower down. Because again, we're just trying to avoid crumbs and flour mm -hmm. dropping on mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. gluten-free food. You mentioned that your, when you go to your families, there's flour. Yeah, you know, in, in our culture, um, they, 
make wheat bread every day. They make the rotis and naans. Mm. And so uh, it's been a challenge because um, she, she would get sick mm -hmm. going there. And I mm -hmm. just didn't know why until she was diagnosed. Got so um, fortunately, they, they now clear out their house like 48 hours before we get there. Um, and they put their dough in a separate container, really, right. you know, kind of in the garage, or I don't know where they put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she's been doing great ever since we've been doing that. So you bring up some really good points. First, that you can be exposed to gluten through the nasal passages. You can breathe gluten in, ingestion. So a person who has celiac disease would want to be careful in that sort of situation to not spend time next to the person who's baking, mm -hmm. right? Flour actually takes about 48 hours to settle on the counter, so it's still in the air. And it falls on things like utensils and paper towels and anything that might be out of there. So the person who's cooking or baking would want to clear that area, clean it up, and, and, and then it's much, much safer for someone with celiac disease. Ideally, someone with celiac disease is not baking alongside someone who's using mm -hmm. gluten-containing flours. Right. right? And the fact that your parents safely moved that aside and did all the cleaning before you came was excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some steps that somebody who has celiac disease can take if they have to actually do the baking. And one of those is to wear a mask. So some of my patients will wear a mask while they're baking for someone else because they have to. But then they'll be extremely careful to also wash their hands clean the area or have someone else clean the area, even better, <laughs> so that they can avoid as much um, contact as possible. Because it's, it's very possible for people with gluten-free diets and people with gluten-containing diets to live together. And I think that's a big point that we want to get across here. Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk about labeling now? Okay. Yeah.